welcome to a new series of videos from Yorkshire Photo Walks, one that I'm calling Thinking Photographically. My series on the basics of photography, which I started in the first lockdown here in the UK, was really popular during 2020, and this series will run alongside it into 2022, and maybe even further. I came to thinking that although learning about the basic technical aspects of photography is really important, it's not the be-all and end-all of photography. Photography goes much deeper and much further than that. I'm a believer in thinking that photography is about 10% technical ability and 90% about how we observe our subject matter and translate that into photographs. So in this new series, we're going to be helping you to look a bit deeper into photography, helping you to be a bit more creative with your camera, helping you to observe your subject matter a bit better, and most importantly, helping you to think about the way that you make your photographs. Each episode is going to be titled with a question, and in this first episode we're kicking it off by asking, how do your photographs stand out? I feel the way that we learn about photography these days can be very matter-of-fact. If you read tutorials in magazines, watch tutorials on YouTube or anywhere else on the internet, or just simply sit down with your camera's manual, you'll often read or see things like, if you expose your photograph like this, you will achieve this result. If you compose your photograph like this, you will achieve this effect. And we almost go to photography by these series of rules that are supposedly made to make our photographs look good. But the problem is that if we all follow these rules, then sooner or later, all of our photographs are going to look very similar indeed. Personally, I think we're already seeing a trend in this direction, especially on social media, where people are just posting photographs to try and achieve more likes than other people. And they're following these rules of photography, but because everybody's doing a similar sort of thing, their photographs aren't standing out. So in order to make them stand out, they're post-producing them to death, and trying to idealise subjects rather than just relying on their knowledge and a bit of creativity to start making photographs their own. The great landscape photographer Ansel Adams once said, we don't just make a photograph, we bring to the act of photography all the things that we've seen, all the music that we've heard, the people that we've loved. Likewise, the war and documentary photographer Don McCullen said if we don't feel anything when we make a photograph then we're not going to get anybody to feel anything when they look at it. Both photographers are coming at photography from very different viewpoints but I think this sort of brings them together in saying that the one thing that helps our photography stand out above the crowd more than anything else is our own individuality as photographers. What I must stress here is I'm not telling you to go away and unlearn every technical aspect of photography that you've ever learnt, because that would be stupid. We all need that technical base knowledge to be able to help us to take a half-decent photograph in the first place. What I am saying is that once you have that base knowledge, it's then when you can start to bend, if not break, the rules entirely. And it's then when you can start to put your own personality into the photographs, rather than being reliant on what other people have told you to do. 
I'm not saying that you must deviate so far away from the path that when people look at your photographs it's so off the wall they think what on earth has this person done here? But just by making a new route, slightly diverting away from the norm, it's then that our individuality shines through in our photographs. As always, I'll share some of the photographs that I've made on this wonderfully atmospheric outing to Rombolds Moor in West Yorkshire at the end of the video. The sort of things that I've been looking out for as I've been wandering around have been just elements of the landscape where the atmosphere is really showing through. And instead of going down the traditional route of photographing the landscape using F8 or F11, which a lot of professional photographers would recommend you do in their tutorials in a location like this on a day like today. I've been going with my widest aperture. Now, I've recently acquired a new lens, which was an early Christmas present, and it's a 35mm 1.8 prime lens. So I've been opening that up to 1.8 and photographing it that way. What that's allowed me to do is almost intensify that beautiful softness that the mist creates in the trees. And instead of drawing your eye to various different contrast points of sharpness in the photograph, if everything was sharp from front to back, it's allowed me to pick out details in and amongst this very busy landscape. By photographing a landscape like this using F8 or F11, it can often draw your eye off in different directions where you can't really gravitate to something specific. By shallowing that depth of field down, hopefully I've been able to draw people's eye to whether it be the moss underneath the trees or an element of contrast where the mist suddenly engulfs the trees and they disappear out of view in a vanishing point in the photograph. A tendency amongst many photographers these days is to shoot what they know. They will have a set composition that's worked for them in the past. They'll have a set set of exposure settings that have worked for them in the past. And they'll just keep on repeating those different processes over and over again because they've worked for them and they just don't want to try anything new. But this afternoon, as I've been wandering around, I've slightly deviated from those rules and those norms of what you'd expect from landscape photography. And by doing that, I've been able to put a bit of my own personality and individuality into the photographs that I've been making. I've not had to wallop the bejeebas off them in post-production, and I most certainly haven't had to idealise the landscape, because I can see it in 360 degree, three dimensions around me. It is what it is, and it's that feeling that I've felt as I've been wandering around that I've photographed, not necessarily what I know about what's going to work in a location like this. Because sometimes, as I've been saying throughout this video, something different can work just as well if you just give it a go. So my recommendation to you is next time you go out with your camera, don't shoot what you know, but shoot what you feel. You might come out with a few duff photographs that you think, well that's a load of rubbish, I'm just going to discount those. But you will start to find that by doing that, your individuality comes through. And instead of having to do extra things to your photographs when following the rules that maybe aren't necessarily needed, your own personality is the thing that is going to make your photographs stand out above the crowd. In the next episode of Thinking Photographically, we're going to be delving into the wonderful world of intent, looking at how we interpret the world around us and how we can translate that into making beautiful, amazing photographs. Until then, if you've liked this video, then please give it a thumbs up. This new Thinking Photographically series is also about sparking conversation about photography, which of course is a very subjective medium. So if you've got an opinion on what we've covered in this video, or any other comment, then please share them with us in the comment section below. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, then please do so, and remember to hit that bell icon to be reminded when we post a new video. They could be anything from our Basics of Photography series to our Photo Walk Recce vlogs, where we go and check out unique and inspirational Yorkshire photography locations. 
Then there's the pièce de résistance themselves as well, the photo walks, where you can join me out in a landscape like this in person to improve your photography skills. For those, it's yorkshirephotowalks.com. I'm going to share now with you some of the photographs that I've taken on this outing this afternoon, and hopefully you'll be able to see some of my personality shining through. Until next time, don't just photograph Yorkshire, experience it with Yorkshire Photo Walks. I look forward to seeing you again in the not too distant future. Thank you very much for watching.